linked to a string of huge timeshare frauds. He was once described as Britain's richest criminal with a fortune of £300 million. No doubt he also had plenty of enemies. But what we need to know tonight is who would want to hire a professional hitman to kill him. It would be hard not to know who John Palmer was. The man known as Britain's richest prisoner has been ordered to hand over £35 million to help compensate the victims of his crime. John Palmer, who's also known as Goldfinger, is serving an eight-year sentence for one of the world's biggest timeshare swindles. Palmer was originally nicknamed Goldfinger after being acquitted of handling gold from the Brinksmat bullion raid in 1983. At one point, he even appeared next to the Queen on the Sunday Times Rich List with an estimated fortune of £300 million. Without doubt, he has made mistakes in his life. I believe he's paid for those mistakes. In 2009, after spending a number of years in and out of prison, John returned to his family in Essex. I was incredibly proud of the way that he'd readjusted to a very, very normal life. My dad was like my best friend and my dad, so it was always games, as you say, as large as, as, large as life. He's not this gangster that everyone would, would paint him to be in the press or the media. He spent all of his time with either my mum or, or myself or my sisters. You know, there was never a day that went past that I spent with him that he wasn't laughing or joking around. He was never serious about it anything. Um, the time I did spend with him was, was quality time. On the 24th of June last year, John and his family were at their home in South Weald. I quite often work in the kitchen and I was trying to send some emails and, and be quite serious about things and he was just very, very playful. He pulled the hairband from my hair, just generally really, really infuriating. Unable to concentrate on her work, Christina went horse riding at around 2 p.m. What? It was just a bit of fun. I apologised to him because I'd been a little bit tough on him. I told him off for being so infuriating. I told him I loved him and he gave me a kiss and that was the last time I saw him alive. After Christina left, John spent the next few hours outside. Previously unreleased CCTV captures him as he walks around the garden. His son James and his girlfriend were in the house. I was studying in the kitchen because I had two financial regulatory exams that I was going to be sitting in about two months' time. My girlfriend was in the lounge. She wasn't at work that day, so she was just relaxing, watching TV. My dad was pottering around in the garden uh, with the dogs. At the back of the garden, he'd started a bonfire, which wasn't uncommon. At around five o'clock, James and his girlfriend decided to work out in the home gym. While they exercised, John continued to collect things in his buggy to burn on the fire. These are the last CCTV images of him.
my girlfriend went outside. She could see my dad lying there. James! I really didn't realise anything had happened. There was, there was no sound. I didn't hear any voices. I didn't actually hear my dogs bark. I heard no gunshots. Call someone, go! You know, it was just very, very quiet. Dad! As an emergency, you tell me exactly what's happened? Emergency, my dad's passed out. He's covered in blood. I, I don't know what's wrong with him. Come on, Dad. Come on, Dad. We're doing everything that you can. Because I could still feel his heart beating. I, I thought there'd be a chance that oh, we could keep him alive. I felt so hopeless because I had to watch him die in front of me. Um, I can totally understand that the, there might be some people that don't have a tremendous amount of empathy towards our situation or, or the loss of John purely because of his reputation. But I think forgetting John Palmer, forget who this is about, what you've got to stop and think about or what we have to stop and think about is that there is someone out there who is prepared to do such a barbaric act, you know, just to, to assassinate someone. A cold-blooded and brutal murder. Well, DCI Stephen Jennings is the lead detective on the case. And are you sure this was a professional hit? Yes, we, um, we strongly believe this is very much a professional hit, therefore contract killing. Um, what our inquiries therefore had to do is not only identify and locate the gunman, but also try to identify and prosecute um, whoever's commissioned this crime. And why do you think he was killed? Um, our inquiries since um, June of last year has led us on to two very significant lines of inquiry. The first that John was due to stand trial for real estate fraud in mainland Spain in April of this year. Uh, that coupled with some key crimes that were committed in the UK during 2015 and also some law enforcement intervention with organised crime and organised crime families. And those key crimes in the UK you're talking about, Hatton Garden, there are rumours that his death could have been linked to that? Yes, there is a lot of speculation around Hatton Gardens and it is something that we are considering along with other crimes that were committed during that time. So is that a strong line of inquiry for you? Yes, it's one of many, but um, yes, it's something we are looking at. Now, shots were not heard by his son, but what do you know about the gun that was used? OK, we think the gun is very similar to the one shown here. Um, it's a self-loading revolver, we believe sm uh, smooth bore and also .32 calibre rounds were used. And where he lived? is a very secluded area, but there were some people in the area that you would really like to talk to. Yes, his house surrounded by woodland in, in, in a country park. Um, this male shown here was seen uh, by members of the public at around the time that John was murdered, as described as five foot ten, white, wearing baggy clothing. And we can see a map as well of the area where he was killed, because there were also people the day before who were seen digging in the area. Yes, there are other witnesses that we are trying to trace, in particular two men that were seen around midday, um, 24 hours beforehand, the 23rd of June. And um, we would very much like to see and, and identify these two people. The house, the house is right in the middle here, really secluded, but there were two women who were caught on camera by somebody that day. Yes, a member of public um, has, has come forward and identified a photograph. These two women were seen in the background of the photograph, so we would like them to contact us or anyone that can identify them. And obviously there's no suggestion they're anything to do with the case. They just happened to be in the area at the time and you would like to talk to them. Yes, they could very much have key evidence. There is, as well, a substantial reward on offer. Yes, the, um, the family have independently offered £50,000 leading to the arrest and conviction of those or parties involved in this crime. OK, thank you. Well, as you've heard, John Palmer may have had his enemies, but no one deserves what happened to him. The gunman and those behind him need to be caught. If you can help in any way, please call now on our usual number, 0500 600 600. Detectives are standing by for your calls.